With me live now in the studio is the Deputy Labor Leader and Shadow Defence Minister Richard Miles. What's your reaction to that, that message from a Chinese official on Twitter? Well, the tweet was appalling. There's no other word to describe it. Uh, it should be taken down and China should apologise. Um, no questions about that. Uh, it doesn't add anything to what is obviously a, a difficult relationship right now. Um, you know, I think uh, the government's reacted appropriately to this. I agree with the Prime Minister that, you know, I hope that this is an incident which actually allows the relationship to reset, but this is an appalling tweet uh, which should be condemned at every quarter. China should pull it down and they should apologise. This comes a week after the Prime Minister made quite a conciliatory message in a speech, mm. trying to maybe reset the relationship then. Does that worry you, that this sort of message is sent, inflammatory message, just days after the Prime Minister was trying to cool things down? Of course, and I, I think the relationship has not been in a good place. I agree with you that I think there's been a couple of voices on the government side which has tried to... Uh, calm tensions between China and, and Australia. We do need to be getting the relationship back into a better place, but this tweet does nothing to help that. Um, it, it, it's incendiary. Um, it, it is appalling. Uh, and China needs now to uh, act in respect of it by pulling it down and by apologising. Do you think that this reflects a, a weakness on the Chinese part when it comes to what's known as uh, you know, soft power? This is from their foreign ministry spokesperson. It's hardly diplomacy at work. Well, it's not diplomacy at work. Um, it, it, it's hard to explain, to be honest, how, uh, from a government account, you could have a tweet of, of this kind. It's certainly not diplomacy at work. We really need to get the relationship back on track. Um, I mean, it's, it's a critically important relationship for Australia, um, our largest trading partner, but there are obviously a whole lot of security anxieties which exist with... China as well. So at every level you would want there to be good communication between China and Australia. A tweet of this kind uh, takes the relationship in completely the wrong direction um, and it's, it's really important that China now acts and, and rectifies this. What it does do is embolden hawks, certainly in the debate here and in China, doesn't it? Well, uh, I, I think all of us want to see a reset in, in the relationship. I mean, there's a lot at stake for both countries in, in having um, the best relationship that we can have. And that's why um, this tweet is, is really... I mean, it's deeply unhelpful. It's obviously repugnant and it is offensive. Um, and, you know, it would be in uh, Australia and China's interest to get this relationship to a very different place. This tweet doesn't help. Do you believe there are enough people of goodwill on both sides to get that relationship back on an even keel? Uh, well, I think it's a very difficult road ahead. And, and as I say, what we've seen today with that tweet makes the road harder. Um, but there is um, enough common interest in, in, in the sense of the, uh, the, the geography that we share, the East Asian time zone, the trade that we engage in, to mean that it should be in, in the interests of both countries to get the relationship to a better place. And, and that's what we need to be working towards. But um, you know, the starting point is um, amends needs to be made by China for this tweet. It, it's, it's an outrageous uh, event to have occurred. Does the government share any responsibility in where the relationship is at right now, given the call for that inquiry? Should they have been more cautious in, in calling for a COVID inquiry out there the first to do so? Should they have had other nations with them before they did that? Look, wherever we've got to in, in the relationship up until this moment in time, I think on this day uh, it's important to reflect how inappropriate, how offensive this tweet is. Um, and it's also appropriate for me and the opposition to acknowledge that the way in which the government has handled this matter today has been absolutely correct. Um, it's really important that we speak out uh, against the, this tweet. It, it obviously goes to a very sensitive issue that Australia's been handling with enormous care. Um, it is absolutely right that the government should have called on China to both uh, pull the tweet down and to apologise, um, and, and we support the government in their actions today. So you don't want to have any navel-gazing or reflecting on government performance to this point? Uh, look, there's, there's, there's um, a whole lot of time for us to be 
thinking about and, and, and working out how we get to uh, a different relationship with China, how we reset this relationship. There's because most of those complaints, that, but, but, most but, of the complaints you agree with in terms of Chinese complaints of Australian policy, the vast bulk of them, in fact, I would say all of them, to some degree, Labor supports almost entirely. So it's a bipartisan row now with China. Well, the, the, the point to make today is that this tweet was, was deeply inappropriate. The government has reacted uh, exactly as it should have in terms of calling it out and calling on China to make amends by apologising and pulling the tweet down. Um, there's, there is um, a high degree of bipartisanship in the way in which we handle this relationship, uh, about the importance of speaking up for Australia's national interests, about the importance of speaking up for human rights. This should be an issue about which there is bipartisanship. Now, it's a, it's a complicated issue. There's a lot at stake. There's a lot to talk about as we go forward, and, and, and we've got plenty of time to do all of that. But on this day, in the face of this act on the part of China, it is very important that the country acts with unanimity, and that's what's happening. Should the CDF re uh, re recommend to the Governor-General the removal of the meritorious group citation for the Special Forces Task Group, as the CDF said he would in his initial response to the Brereton report? Well, it's a very difficult uh, and, and, and complex matter that has been, that has been dealt with by the Brereton report in, in full. I, I think the Brereton report is an extraordinary piece of work, actually. Um, and, uh, and again, I think it's been handled with sensitivity at the level of defence um, and the level of the government. In respect of that question specifically, um, the government's made clear that it's not made a decision in respect of that. And if I understood the Prime Minister correctly in his statement this afternoon, uh, he said that the CDF will be clarifying the position in respect of this uh, later. I think we should allow that to play out. Um, Can you understand why some families of those dead soldiers who were awarded this posthumously would be devastated to have to hand the medal back? Yeah, of course I can. Um, and that's why, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a very complex uh, and sensitive matter. I think it's important that... Uh, time be taken to, to, to work through uh, how this recommendation is moved forward. Uh, it seems to me that's what the government is doing in, in making it clear that they've not made any decisions yet in respect of that. Uh, from the perspective of the opposition, we want to give the, the government the space and the time to work that through because we acknowledge how complex hey, but are you it is. Un, are but you uncomfortable? I to say, yeah. Karen, I totally understand um, the sense that uh, people who have... Uh, fought with distinction on behalf of our nation in Afghanistan would feel um, in relation to this question about the meritorious unit citation, but indeed the whole gamut of what is, is dealt with in the yeah. Brereton Report. And in, in that respect, I think it's important to acknowledge the distinguished service of those people, to make it clear that it would be a tragedy if our engagement with Afghanistan was simply seen through the prism of these allegations. I mean, the allegations in respect of a few should not detract from the sacrifice of the many thousands of Australians um, who have contributed in such a distinguished way in, in this in this. Well, using that and, principle... And using, and, and on behalf of our nation. Well, using that principle, isn't it then unfair to tarnish all of the Special Forces Task Group with... You all tar them with the same brush with it, those alleged to have carried out war crimes. Well, th th that's... Uh, there is a process... Um, that the government has articulated in, in relation to this, but in relation to the other uh, distinguished service medals um, which go to officers uh, around reviewing them. I, I think it's important that that process be allowed to play out. I mean, obviously, the allegations contained in the Brereton report are themselves completely appalling. Um, and it's important as a nation that we're facing up to this. But we are. And that's what the Brereton Report is doing. It's why I said that I actually think it is a, re a remarkable piece of work. And I uh, hope that Australia, uh, and I'm confident that Australia, has the capacity to deal with this issue and to deal with the mistakes that have been made. Now, we've got to 
acknowledge that that's occurred and, and there are going to be implications in relation to this. The whole question in respect of awards and medals, uh, you know, there is a process to go through. It, it, I understand why the report has gone there and its recommendations, but we need to uh, put, allow the time for this to play out and, and, and that's where, uh, that's what we, I think the government's doing and, and that's what we want to support. Richard Miles, thanks. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Karen.